video I posted a little blues jam where I used um where I used this ethereal sound that you were hearing in my playing here and I used that in pretty much the blues rhythm as well as the as adding a little flourish with a lot of um tri chorus stereo a sound that I like very much and was something that I grew up hearing on a lot of hit songs throughout much of the 80s and 90s, which was pretty much my childhood. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how just how to pull off that sound. Now, throughout the 80s, many guitar players, including Steve Lukather, Dan Huff, and one of my all-time favorites, Michael Landau, all had one of those big refrigerator-sized rack units where they had all their effects essentially in one rack with the preamp and tri course was a big part of it back then. But there's other alternatives you can use to achieve that particular sound without a rack. So, if this is the kind of sound you're after, then this video is for you. So, so if you're, so if you're like me, probably a big fan of Michael Landau as I am. Michael Landau is pretty much up there with my all-time favorite guitar player Daryl Starmer who is best known for his work with Phil Collins's band and I'm also pretty sure Daryl Starmer has pulled off this kind of sound too and I know I've also heard it from Paul Jackson Jr. Now if you're wondering who Michael Landau is, he's probably one of the most renowned session guitarists in the music industry, and he's recorded and toured with numerous artists throughout much of the 80s and 90s, including Cher, James Taylor, Olivia Newton-John, Neil Diamond, Richard Marks, Kenny Loggins, Celine Dion, and the list goes on and on. But he was probably one of the most in demand and highly renowned session guitarists of, of, throughout that time. And he and his sound was one of those that I grew up hearing quite a lot of. And and Michael Landau, like I said, is a, is a very big influence to me. And so I am, so let's talk about the equipment I'm going to use. First of all, the guitar. This is an all-new Fender American Professional Stratocaster. And 
just got this brand spanking new a couple months ago, and I have two Fender Blues Junior amplifiers. Now, if you only have one amplifier, you can still pull this sound off, but I love having that stereo to my advantage. So if you have two, great. If you have one, that's okay too. And Michael Landau played one of... I've seen him play in Stratocasters before, especially throughout much of his work in the studio. The strap he used is what some aficionados may call a fat strat. And a fat strat has a humbucker pickup right here at the bridge position. And you don't necessarily have to have a fat strat or, or a humbucker at the bridge position, but even just um, a standard strat with three single coil pickups can still get you in the ballpark. And I've also seen that the Fender Custom Shop has a few Michael Landau signature guitars, and they come standard with the Fender Fat 50s pickups. And I've seen the Shure Guitar Company, S U H R, also make some of these Michael Landau custom pickups. And but you don't necessarily have to have those in your guitar to sound like Michael Landau. And these pickups I have here, they are the V-Mod pickups, and they come standard in the Fender American Professional Series. And they are, from what I heard, they're very, they're pretty much an upgrade from the Fat 50s. They have a very chimey tone to them, and Michael Landau's tone strikes me as being very chimey, so let's just, um, without any effects, except maybe my compressor, I'm going to show you just how chimey th this is, so... <laughs> And to get that that tone, um, it's probably best that you have your five-way pickup toggle switch in the number four position, which is the middle and bridge pickups at the same time. Now, if your electric guitar only has two pickups at the neck and bridge positions, if then, if you, if you, in other words, if you don't have a Strat or any kind of guitar with um, three pickups and a five-way switch, then don't sweat it. So, anyway, so uh, in the next shot, I'm going to show you the effects that I'm going to be using to pull off okay. this. Okay, now the effects I'm using here... Um, first of all, I'll tell you what I'm using, and then I'll explain how I use them to get this sound. Now, the first one here is the TC Electronics Hypergravity Compressor. And from the Hypergravity, I'm going into the Maxon SD9 Sonic Distortion. <laughs> Looks an awful lot like a tube screamer, don't it? <laughs> From the SD9, I am plugged into the Boss FV500 volume pedal, and from there, I go into the Boss VB2 vibrato pedal. This, by the way, is the VB2W, part of their Wazacraft series. And then from there, I am plugged into one of my all-time favorites that is the Landau Stereo Chorus from Vertex Effects 
and it, yes, it looks an awful lot like an Arion stereo course, and it uses that exact same casing. And from the Landau stereo course, I am plugged into the TC Electronics flashback delay. And, and from the flashback delay, I'm plugged into the TC Electronics Hall of Fame 2 Reverb. And by the way, the Landau Stereo Chorus, the Flashback Delay, and the Hall of Fame 2, I'm, I'm running them all in stereo here. So now, um, now first of all, you don't have to use exactly what I have here. So, um, whatever, whatever compressor, overdrive, volume pedal, vibrato, chorus, delay, reverb, whatever you have, you can use whatever you have at your disposal. So, now first of all, the, um, let's talk about the compressor. Now, what the compressor does is it squashes your dynamics and in my opinion it gives a little more bottom end a little and which makes your sound a little more a little more defined it gives more definition to your tone so there's other videos out here that do explain a little more in depth about how compression works but let's just um, turn on the compressor first of all um, here's my dry signal and okay that's the dry signal no effects and now Let's turn on the compressor and see what what we get. A lot more definition there. So, um, and here's how I have the compressor set up. I have it. I got. It has four knobs and a toggle switch here. I currently have the toggle switch in the tone print setting and the hypergravity is by the way a tone print enabled pedal which is which TC Electronics has quite a series of tone print enabled pedals and I have this one in the tone print setting and the tone print I have is called the feels good tone print by blues artist Kirk Fletcher and I've used it quite a lot in many of my in many of the posts I've put up here on YouTube and Kirk Fletcher if by any chance you happen to see this video I want to say that um, this feels good tone print you created is it, it really cuts it for me I use it in a lot of my songs, and and I like your Fats Verb Tone Print too, which I have in one of the Tone Print slots in my Hall of Fame 2 Reverb. And so with so by creating this um, feels good Tone Print, you really hit it out in the ballpark. So kudos to you. And so now the the overdrive I'll I'll show you that I'll show you later in the video um, some dirty sounds you can get with this stereo course so uh, I'll show you from there we have a vibrato pedal which um, is which bends your notes a little now um, okay so on the hypergravity compressor, I have my my sustain at about 1230 and 
My level is about 1130. I have the attack and blend at full blast. Now, the Maxon SD9, I'll show you that later when I show demonstrate some dirt with this stereo chorus. So, so the the VB2W vibrato pedal, I have sort of a, this is sort of a um, subtle bending effect that I have set up. Let's see what that sounds like. I have it on. Okay, now, um, okay, here's where I have my dials. My rate is at about 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock for depth, and rise time 11 o'clock, and I have it in the, in the bypass mode. And now, this next one, I'm going to show you the settings I have here. This one is an all-time favorite man. And this is called the Landau Stereo Chorus by Vertex FX. And now, you don't necessarily have to have this. You can use any chorus pedal you have at your disposal. But chorus is going to be crucial for achieving this sound. So, um... So you have quite a few options here. You can have both your um, your rate or speed and your depth knob about um, at the 12 o'clock position here. And I like to have the tone knob here at about anywhere from 2 o'clock to full blast. So with the... and most chorus pedals are going to have a rate or speed and a depth knob. So, first of all, let's um, hear what these sound like at high noon. Not bad. Now, whatever you do, you don't want to turn your rate up too high. Turn up too high, you're going to get like a Leslie speaker sound. And that for me is just too, as I like to call it, seasick. So, um, yeah. But typically, I like slow chorusing, and to get that, I like to have my my rate at about 10 o'clock and my depth at about 2 so let's just turn this back on or you can put it up full black story behind how the um, Landau stereo course was developed. Um, Mike Landau purchased a an Arion stereo course many years back and and he used it in much of his sound throughout much of the 80s and 90s and he and it was pretty much a staple in his rig for some 20 years. But there was one thing about it that for some 20 years he never knew. The particular 
Arion stereo course that he had had a factory defect. And he and he knew nothing about it until one day when he took it into Mason Marangella at Vertex Effects to be modified and it was Mason who uncovered the factory defect that had been there since Mike had purchased the pedal. So he and Mason pretty much teamed up and he suggested that they design a chorus pedal that was with a circuit that was based upon that defect. They went for it and that's how and and that's and that's basically what what you have a chorus pedal based upon that particular defect that Mike Landau had. When I first discovered this, I was like, I, I just had to have one of those pedals myself. And I did some research on the internet only to find that Vertex no longer makes this. They discontinued it a long time ago and so I had to go through a few loops to get my hands on one and I ended up purchasing it online from some music store over in the UK. But I'm glad I did and I do not see myself ever letting go of this. So, so this is definitely a staple it was definitely a staple in Mike Landau's rig, as was the Maxon SD9. So, anyway, so once again, rate 10 o'clock, depth 2 o'clock, and tone or level, if equipped, anywhere from 2 o'clock to full blast. So, now for the delay. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Definitely gives you more more body to the sound, but and to get that, um, it all depends upon your delay. But um, but one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have too many repeats and the repeats are controlled by the, the feedback knob so I have mine here at about um, at about 12 o'clock and the delay time is also at 12 o'clock and of course my level is at 1230 and I and in in this particular delay pedal you got all sorts of different um, delay modes. You got, um, right now I'm in the dynamic setting. And, but there's also the um, 2290 setting, which is based on a circuit of um, an old TC electronics pedal that is no longer in production. Not, not bad. Tape delay might work too, let's see. Beautiful. And of course you have ping pong effect too, which um and and it's basically just that your repeats if you have two amps your repeats are going to bounce from one amp to the next, up like a ping pong effect. Here's what that sounds like. So even a ping pong delay, if you have that, will really get you in the ballpark. But I use the dynamic setting. And now for the reverb. Um, and as far as reverb, you got, um, this one has both a hall setting 
and church, and I'll and I'll demonstrate both of those for you in a second. But f and most reverb pedals on today's market will have a room setting, hall, spring, and plate. Now, if you don't have a reverb pedal, you may have a reverb knob on your amp. You may have a spring reverb. And then my both my blues juniors have that. So first of all, I'm gonna just turn them up to about ten o'clock there, and just show you how that how the spring reverb in a Fender amp sounds with this. So. Say so myself. Now, I'll now I'll demonstrate for you here the difference between hall and church. Now, what I used in last week's video, the hall setting. Here's here's what that sounds like. <laughs> church setting uh, and this one's a real favorite of mine use it a lot in my ambient plan so this is the church mode <laughs> to it so um, but if you don't have a church setting on your reverb pedal then you're very likely to have a hall setting that will definitely get you in the ballpark but let's just um see what other reverb settings sound like let's first of all let's try the, the room setting <laughs> Hall, we already heard that. Spring, let's just listen to that real quick. Not bad. And plate, another standard on most reverb pedals. Definitely gonna get you in the ballpark for this, so that's yeah, add in some vibrato. Yeah. Vibrato and compressor, of course, are only optional for this, so um so let's just hear what we get when I don't have compression. Not bad, but um, so anyway, that's how you get that's pretty much how you get that particular setting, and also. If you have one at your disposal, you could also use a harmony pedal like this. This is the Boss HR2 Harmonist. And if you don't, and you have your voice knobs right here, if you have them at 12 o'clock, you're in the detune setting. And of course, um, this has been discontinued by um, 
by Boss a long time ago, but they do have the PS6 Harmonist. And in addition, um, here's one that's easy to get your hands on. This is the Corona Chorus by TC Electronics. And, um, and you have both speed, depth, level, and tone. And, and, I, and the tone print I have in here is called Tritronics, which basically emulates that tri-chorus rack sound that Michael Landau and several others were known for using back in the 80s. So, um, if, so if all you have is a Corona Chorus, then all you, sh all you sh need to do is just download the Tritronics tone print. It is by the people at TC Electronics. Just download Tritronics into your Corona course and you're pretty much right in the ballpark there. So it's going to produce pretty much that that same sound and and so if you have a, a harmonizer that's optional. I know Michael Landau had that in his rack unit but you don't necessarily have to have that if you have one and it has a detune setting you can use that to your advantage but if not then but chorus delay and reverb are definitely going to be essential for achieving this sound so now with that let's um put on a little dirt and see what we get <laughs> so I'm just gonna play like maybe some blues riffs here and demonstrate that <laughs> sounds great with an acoustic electric guitar and but you kind of want to be careful with the settings on your compressor otherwise it can produce a lot of feedback so I just turned the blend down to about one o'clock but the rest of the dials on there are still the same and and on the rest of my pedals that you just saw, the settings are all still the same, and I'm plugged into a Fishman Loudbox Artist. Now I'm only running in mono since I only have just one acoustic amp, and the guitar I'm using here for this little demo is my Washburn EA20. This is probably my most favorite acoustic electric and I don't 
seen myself ever letting go of this either. But it's definitely a great sounding guitar, so let's just see how the track chorus stereo effect sounds here. Just beautiful, beautiful. This is definitely a favorite sound of mine. Now, dirt, you may be wondering about that. Well, you could use a little dirt if you wanted to, um, but again, you kind of want to be careful because um, because you could use dirt with an acoustic electric, but be careful. So, real quick, just going to show you how that sounds. So, Not bad, just um, make sure you level it out though, <laughs> or you're going to get a lot of feedback and you don't want that in your acoustic playing, that is, so. Anyway, that is how you get a tri-chorus stereo sound, so I want to thank you all for tuning in, and... If you ain't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. Just um, click the subscribe button right down there in the bottom right hand corner. It should only take you about a tenth of a second to do so. And click the bell notification. This way, whenever I post something new on here, you'll hear about it. You'll be notified about it right away. So, so thank you for tuning in, and I'll see y'all next week. Until then, have a good weekend, and enjoy the week, and I'll see you next week.